he's he's one of the better ISO players in the last 10, 15 years. And he's also a willing passer. Chris Paul is a pass first point guard, which is become an anomaly at this point in the NBA. These are characteristics that match up with the Golden State Warriors. When you have two guys who are your best two players and they are looking to set up the lesser players, that is a team that is extremely dangerous. That's why they ran out, ran LeBron James and his crew out the gym recently, because when you only have LeBron as the only willing passer, you have a bunch of guys trying to be the man. And you have a bunch of guys trying to be the man. It's not conducive to a cohesive unit. And when you don't have a cohesive unit, you need to shake up everything and get rid of a bunch of those guys. Now, individually, those guys, Isaiah Thomas is shooting much better in uh, Los Angeles because, again, they're playing like a cohesive unit. Uh, Jay Crowder is playing better in Utah. Again, they're playing like a cohesive unit. They just don't have the talent. And so, you know, you go through the league, Boston Celtics, and shout out to Dwayne Casey for changing two NBA All-Stars, one potential Hall of Famer, and getting them to buy in, sharing the basketball. So when you look at the Golden State Warriors, you look at the uh, uh, and their ability to play defense as well as get you out of your offense. That's why they are public enemy number one, or that's why they sit at the top of the mountain and people trying to knock them down. The Houston Rockets have the ability to do the same, and they've taken on those exact same characteristics. Mike characteristics. Mike Den- D'Antoni or D'Antoni or however you say his last name. I've heard it pronounced both ways. He has actually incorporated more of the Golden State Warriors offense into his fast break uh, situation. Chris Paul allows him to do that because Chris Paul is a facilitator. He sets up things and he has everything moving. And the best thing to happen to the Houston Rockets, in my opinion, was for Chris Paul to go down for his annual injury and miss a few days because he was able to watch the system and not learn and play. He's smart enough to understand that, hey, I didn't know this. He sat there and watched. He learned. He watched James Harden get down, and voila, the Houston Rockets are the number, uh, they're, they're the number one choice to bump off the Golden State Warriors. The second choice I have is the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, that's a team that's actually playing defense. And for all those who hate Carmelo Anthony because the dudes on TV tell you that he doesn't play defense, he's not a winner. Everybody who has amnesia, y'all forget that Carmelo Anthony walked right out of the NCAA tournament after winning it all, national champion, walked right into the NBA and promptly put the Denver Nuggets, who were picking second and uh, uh, third in the NBA draft that year, promptly into the playoffs. Now, oh, well, he ain't win anything. Well, when you come out on Anthony, you playing with a bunch of Rudys, it's kind of hard to beat Shaq and Kobe and anybody else. Shaq, Kobe, and three girls that's listening to this show, it's kind of hard to beat them when you're playing with them clowns that Carmelo was playing with. But he did put that team on his back for several years, and he continued to get to the second round, run into the Spurs, Manu Ginobili, uh, uh, Tony Parker, Captain Jack, David Robinson, Tim Duncan. He's not going to beat that crew. So stop falling for the okie doke telling you that Carmelo Anthony isn't a winner. Nobody is a winner until they get some assistance. LeBron James wasn't a winner until he went and forced his way into a system. Carmelo Anthony, again, he's, you know what Carmelo Anthony is at this point? Is he as talented as LeBron James? No. Is he the player LeBron James is? No. But he is LeBron James before he linked up with Dwayne Wade and before he linked up with Kyrie Irving, before Michael Jordan linked up with Scottie Pippen. He is Dominique Wilkins. He is Bernard King. He's that type of player. Bernard King couldn't get past the Celtics. Why? Because the Celtics were stacked for, with this. With, you know, nobody was calling a super team. It's only a super team when somebody do it on their own, when you got a guy with a suit and tie, and he put together a team that's not a super team. How ironic is that? But – Carmelo Anthony is not a non-winner. Carmelo Anthony has not had the prerequisite tools to be a winner. If, don't tell me about Chauncey Billis when he was 138 years old and Allen Iverson when he was 130 years old because those don't count. Give, if you want proper execution, you need to pair him with someone in their prime when he in his prime and then 
you can say he's not a winner. But even with Melo on that team, Carmelo is he's playing the background. Let's not forget. Remember, the, the book on Carmelo was he didn't want to share the spotlight. He's sharing the hell out of the spotlight. That 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 game winning shot uh Russell hit a couple of nights ago, who gave it to him? Carmelo. So stop at that nonsense. Then you got Paul George, who may, in my opinion, he gets my vote for defensive player of the year. He lead the league in steals. And I know if you listen to the show Wednesday, you heard me and the homie B C Cook debating about statistics and steals and how I don't believe steals mean a lot. But when you are good on the ball on ball defender, when you a Scottie Pippen esque defender or you a uh, uh, Dennis Rodman as Gary Payton as defender, and you lead the league in steals, that's a different situation because when you need somebody to be shut down, you go get Paul George. You go get Scottie Pippen. You go get Gary Payton. When they lead the league in steals, they taking it from people on the ball as well as playing the passing lane. But with that being said, when it's time to defend somebody, they go put them on Paul George. Paul George is defending KD. Is he going to stop KD? Nobody's going to stop KD. So, no, don't tell me. Well, he couldn't stop KD. Who can? This is like when y'all say, well, LeBron James ain't better than Michael Jordan. Okay, who is? Well, don't don't compare him to anybody else. Everybody else, this name, not Magic, Michael, Bird. There's really not an argument. So, when you're dealing with that type of manpower, and as long as Russell Westbrook does not get into that Russell Westbrook mode where he feels that he needs to shoot all the balls and run up and down and pull up for them wild, frantic threes, I believe Oklahoma City, too, will be able to take down the Golden State Warriors because, for whatever reason, they play up to their talent. And they also play down to their talent. But in the playoffs, there's no talent to play down to. So in the event that they bump into the Golden State Warriors, they may have problems. Now, this, the, the bad thing about them is, as I stated, they play down to their – it seems like they only bring their air game when the Golden State Warriors are in town. And it's kind of difficult for them to beat the Houston uh, Rockets because you got Joe Johnson, you got Trevor Reza, you got Ryan Anderson, you got Chris Paul, James Hart, it's kind of hard to beat them because you're not going to out-defend them. But for whatever reason, they have Golden State number, and that's why I believe they have an opportunity. Now, when you go to the East, you're looking at LeBron James, you're looking at Kyrie Irving, and you're looking at uh, 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 DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry. Now, until LeBron James and his crew finally jail, and they got about 15 more games to jail, it's going to be extremely difficult for them to pull that off. And and the reason I say that is continuity. You guys heard me say this a million and one time. Continuity is king when it comes to sports. Anytime you're dealing with athletics, continuity will always be king and it will never be, it will never change. And that's what the problem is right now with the Cleveland Cavaliers. It's not Teron Lou. It's not none of that. You can complain to Ron Lou if you like, but it's not Teron's Teron Lou is not the reason that the Cleveland Cavaliers are not winning. He got bad matchups and he needs to do this and he needs to do that. No, he does not. Those guys are not used to playing with each other. So and until they start playing well with each other, he's gonna have problems. And, and as long as he has those problems, he will keep you think the Cleveland Cavaliers will continue. But, like I said, as long as they have those problems or continuity, lack of continuity, the Cleveland Cavaliers will continue to struggle. But, with that being said, the Cleveland Cavaliers have LeBron James, and he's the X-Factor, and he's the reason teams win NBA titles. So, when you're dealing with LeBron James, you have an opportunity to win no matter who's in the gym. I don't believe the Boston Celtics have enough Grit to win. They're looking at a situation to where most of these guys were a year or two removed from, and when you're a year or two removed from college experience, you're going to have a problem beating the LeBron James led team. I'm sorry. You don't have the talent or the experience to beat a LeBron James led team. Now, the problem is Dwayne Casey and the Toronto Raptors. Everybody's looking at the history of the Toronto Raptors and saying, 
Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan consistently choke. And I don't have a problem with you saying that because their history states that they don't live up to their abilities. And they don't. But understand, they are not playing in the fashion that they were playing in when they were not living up to their abilities. What they were doing is playing a bunch of ISO ball, one-on-one. DeMar DeRozan didn't have the jump, the prerequisite jumper it takes to be an NBA champion. He was a mid-range guy like Dwayne Wade, and Dwayne Casey hadn't yet been the ball by him to it. If you ask me, the Toronto Raptors will give LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers, if they make it that far, all kinds of hate. It's going to be hell to pay the captain, as they say, because you're looking at a situation to where as this team is stacked from top to bottom, you got a premier all-star plan at the top of his game, and you I have a team led by LeBron James with very little experience. Well, I just this you can't dis I can't diss uh, Boston for not having experience with Dan Pat LeBron James on back for having experience and he's the only dude, him and Kevin Love are the only dudes who are consistent with experience, but it's gonna be difficult. Everybody thinks it's gonna be a cakewalk with the Toronto Raptors and uh uh the Cleveland Cavaliers if they meet in the playoffs, it's not gonna be. Trust me, it's not gonna be. Dwayne Casey is not a bad coach. DeMar DeRozan is a NBA all star. He's in the MVP conversation. I don't think he'll win it, but he's definitely in the NBA MVP conversation. So when you're dealing with that type of uh, firepower, and let's not forget Kyle Lowry, let's not forget the other people on this team, this is a team that can and will threaten LeBron James' NBA supremacy this year. You can disregard it. You can overlook it. You can do whatever you want to do. And the reason, like, one of the teams that I like is the Bullets, the Wizards, the Washington Wizards, but I don't think they have a mental grit to pull it off because they are still arguing about John Wall not playing and them playing better. They are literally having conversations that we playing better without John Wall. If John Wall is your leader, you're playing better. At one point, if you play well without your team leader, what people would say is, uh, um, you're looking at a situation to where as the next man up did his thing, and now we're proud of it. But now we are living in a world that you get knocked for that. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. You got you people got knocking knock. guys for stepping up when they're supposed to step up and not, and, and instead of saying, hey, that's a great coaching job. Hey, Bradley Bill and that crew stepped up next man up. So when you're dealing with that type of situation, how could you possibly be successful in that world? You can't be. So in my opinion, that is. And if you agree, disagree, or just want to participate, 760-888-5753. Again, another 760-888-5753. And uh, otherwise, that's pretty much it because I don't really see the Greek freak and that crew doing a whole lot. I like them, but... Parker and the Greek freak and a bunch of people who are in disarray. I just don't see it happening. I really don't see it happening. And the last thing in regards to the NBA is staying on this LeBron James conversation. It's the whole situation to where as LeBron James is going to go to Philadelphia. LeBron James, look, if you ask me, this is a, another construct created by Matt, uh, uh, the NBA to keep the NBA and the media. This is the first year ever that the NBA got more talk in the offseason than the NFL. And we, and I'm, I'm quite sure the NBA loved it. They should love it. It's their business. They got the whole world talking about them. So what we're going to do is keep LeBron James in the headlight. We're going to continue to pimp him out. And as we pimp him out, we're going to make money off of it. There have been 16 different articles wrote on NBA.com about where LeBron's going to go to. Detroit. Los Angeles Clippers, Los Angeles Lakers, Philadelphia, Golden State, Houston, so forth and so on. I even heard he may go play with the Greek freak. People, let's, at some point, you're going to have to stop falling for the banana and the tailpipe. LeBron James sings the praises of Joel Embiid, and he sings the praises of uh, Ben Simmons. And the first thing on ESPN.com is, hey, he's he giving them too many props. 
he may want to play there. No, LeBron James owns a, a sport 